Hello and welcome to this short training video on syringe pumps, the management of palliative care patients in the community and the coronavirus. My name is Ellie Howes and I am a registered nurse and a practice development and learning facilitator for St Margaret's Hospice. This short video has been made especially to help and support registered nurses who will be setting up and managing syringe pumps in the community and who may also be caring for palliative patients with coronavirus, whose main symptoms might include breathlessness and agitation. Communicating to the patient and carers is paramount. It's important to explain the reasons why a syringe pump has been indicated, Explain it's to help manage symptoms such as pain, nausea, breathlessness and agitation and that by means of a syringe pump they are getting a steady and continuous medication over a 24 hour period, therefore avoiding peaks and troughs of the symptoms. Explain what medications are going to be used and why. Dosages will be prescribed on each individual patient according to their symptoms experienced. Remembering some medications can help manage more than one symptom, such as morphine sulfate, which can be indicated for pain or breathlessness or both. After this has been explained to patients and carers, it is important to gain informed consent. And if unable to do so, a best interest decision will need to be made by the team with the family. It is also important to explain once the syringe pump is set up and running, it can take up to four to six hours for the medications to become fully effective. So a prescribed as required injectable drug can be administered in the interim. Setting up of a syringe pump. The syringe pump will be prescribed in the palliative care drug chart. It is important to make sure it is prescribed correctly, that the medications are present in the home. And you have the correct equipment available. You should have a syringe pump, that has been safety tested within the last year, that you have a nine volt Duracell battery, that you have a lockable box, and you also have a bag to carry it and also to protect it from sunlight. You are also going to need either a 30 mil or a 20 mil Lurlock syringe, and your giving set, which includes a safety intimate cannula and also a line as well and a clear sea view film or something similar to hold the cannula in place. You will also need a label, a medication label to write all the information of what is in the syringe pump, a key and also something to clean the area such as a chloroprep wipe or sponge. Firstly, it is very important to find a clean and available surface to work from, if possible. You must then wash your hands before drawing up any medication. It is important to draw up the medication in individual syringes before adding it to either a 30 mil Lurlock syringe or a 20 mil Lurlock syringe. Every organisation will have a policy and procedure so it's important to familiarise yourself with these beforehand. Once your medications have been drawn up and the diluent has been added, you need to prime your line. Your line is approximately one mil volume. You also need to fill out a medicines label with the patient's details, the drugs that are being used and the amount, the total volume and who has made it. You then need to find a suitable site to which you are going to introduce your cannula. Once you find your suitable site, use your chloroprep sponge or your wipe and clean the area and let it dry for 30 seconds. You can then introduce your BD safety intima and hold it in place securely with a sea view film or something similar. You now need to turn your pump on. So you introduce your battery and you switch the machine on. It will preload to the position of the last syringe that was in it. 
you can use the forward and back buttons to move the back actuator so that the syringe will sit in comfortably. The syringe should sit in in a nice straight line and if it is correctly in place it will show you which syringe it has read and identified on the front of the screen. This one says it's a 30ml Braun Omnifix, which it is. If it was a different syringe, you have got the up and down buttons to change to the correct syringe. Once the correct syringe is identified, you're going to press yes. This will then give you a menu, which includes the volume of the barrel, the duration, which is 24 hours, the rate of mils per hour. If you're happy with this, then you press yes. It's now going to say start infusion. This is when you will connect your line to the safety intima. You will not do so before this point, as you may give the patient a bolus. Once connected, you press start and the pump will start delivering. It will give you a countdown of time remaining at the top of the screen, the rate of mils per hour, and it will say pump delivering at the bottom. You then need to lock the keypad. You can check the volume to be infused in mils by pressing the info button once. It will also tell you the volume that has been infused. If you press the info button twice, it will give you the battery level. In the community, you should change the battery before it falls lower than 40%. You then want to place it into a lockable box, locking it with the key provided. Then you will place it into the bag, to protect it from sunlight. Importantly, you should place the bag either at the same level as the safety intima site or below to stop any, uh, any chance of siphonage. In my experience, one of the main reasons for the pump alarming is due to occlusion. And there can be several reasons for this and it can be easily rectified. It could be anything as simple as the patient leaning on the line and occluding the line. It could be something like the site of the um, intima uh, could be swollen, therefore you just would change the site. And also it could be something like crystallization that's in the line and this can be due to medication. Remembering that some of these patients may have the coronavirus and the most common symptoms of breathlessness and agitation, on the front of the chart are the just-in-case subcut medications. These may be prescribed on the inside of the chart depending on individual patients and symptoms experience. This could include a different opioid, for example, oxycodone or a different antiemetic. These can usually be given two to four hourly depending on the drug. If there is no syringe pump available or subcut drugs available for PRN doses, you could administer non-subcut drugs that are prescribed, either sublingually, buccally or orally, to manage these distressing symptoms. Again, remembering some of these drugs can manage more than one symptom at a time. It is also important to remember non-pharmacological methods of symptom control, such as opening a window to get a steady flow of air or repositioning of a patient also to investigate as to whether the agitation is due to something else other than breathlessness, such as a blocked catheter or constipation. If you would like any further advice or support, do not hesitate to contact our advice line. Thank you very much and look after yourselves.